So um, mine's a continuation of the um, what Captain Case was teaching in there. So we're talking more or less EMS and entrapments and then vehicle crashes. Um, so one of the big things I wanted to talk about is the very first thing that for us on a vehicle crash or entrapment is our safety, okay, and your crew, okay. So the, a lot of what I'm talking about here is going to be basically not that you're going to do everything that's in this outline, but it's basically you're the supervisor. So as a supervisor, you guys should be the ones that make sure it gets done, okay. So when you're pulling up on the scene, the basic thing is, is you're going to take care of looking at the scene. You're going to sit there and go, hey, you know, do I have power lines down? Do I have gasoline down on the ground? Do I have a hazmat situation? All this is you're taking this full picture in as you're pulling up, okay? Second thing is, is you're looking at vehicle damage, okay? If you find a vehicle laying down in, in a ravine on its top, how do you think it got down there? roll over, right? You know, roll down the, down the hill. So if you see a, a door open or something, what might you think about? It might have been a, a vehicle, you know, one of the people was ejected out. So one of the very first officers that we had that came through here, he says what he likes to do, especially at night, is take out the tick and just scan the area, you know, to see if we have somebody laying down, you know, that we might have missed, okay? So that's something to think about. Think about your damage, you know, is it, is it front end damage, you know, is it rear end damage, you know, is it a side impact? What's going to be our worst impact as for the patient? The side, because they don't have any vehicle to, to save them, basically, there's not a whole lot there, okay? So the big thing about that is, is look at the vehicle that hit them. Is it an SUV, you know? If an SUV is up high, I think that the patient's going to have more damage as compared to a car that was down low because it's going to hit into the seat instead of hitting into them. Um, think about the airbags deployed, okay? So not all the time are they deployed. And if they're not, your guys should be looking at like the steering wheel, the dashboard, you know, um, the, the windshield to see if it's popped out, okay? So that's all stuff that should be looked at. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about triage. So when you have multiple victims, don't hesitate not only to call for your medic unit, but call for extra, you know, extra companies to come and help out. Okay. Um, every chief that's been down here has has been very proactive, and they say, yeah, if you need extra companies, don't hesitate to call. You can always turn them around. You know, if, if they're not, and they're not critical injuries. Um, think about what the chief's going to ask when you pull up on the scene, okay? You know, he's going to sit there and go, how many patients have I got and what have I got, right? So basically know what's going on on the whole scene, which, how critical are your patients. Something to think about also is, is if you've got a second medic unit coming because you called for it already and they're not that far away, Part of what you can do is, if it's a long entrapment time, is actually take and, and you know take that first medic unit instead of waiting for the entrapment person to come out. Take your second critical patient. Okay. Um, think about looking around the situation, because your guys are going to be tunneled in, looking at the patients that they can see. So look at stuff that might give you a clue that there might be another person or, or a baby or something that might be in the car that you hadn't thought about. So look at, you know, look for a car seat, look for that baby on board sign, or maybe there's a person there, you know, something, something that might give you an idea that might have been somebody else in there. Um, one of the other things they wanted us to talk about was hemorrhages, okay? New protocol in, it allows us to actually take care of life-threatening hemorrhages before we actually take care of doing the airway, okay? 99% of the time for us, we usually have enough people that we do both at the same time, but the protocols allow us to take care of that life-threatening hemorrhage. So they want us to get a cat tourniquet on as soon as we can, okay? Um, <coughs> they wanted us to talk about when we get on the scene, some of the big things we need to do that we're kind of missing out on. Um, we got heroin overdoses that are a lot of our accidents. 
They want us to bag the patient. They want us to make sure if it's a car accident, take care of the C-spine and make sure that we're taking care of the C-spine. We've had a lot of companies that have, and that's what prompted all this, is that we're not taking care of our patients. You know, we're number one, the patient should be number two. Taking care of that car should be number three. So think about your patient. That's your biggest thing that you need to be taken care of besides yourself. Okay. Um, think about airbag smoke. Okay, so you got that talc or the cornstarch, whichever that's in the airbags. So think about if you've got an asthma patient or the older patients with the COPD that are stuck inside of a car and they've got all that smoke in there. So that's going to cause secondary problems. So instead of causing that secondary, maybe you'll tell your guys to put some O2 on them. That might be a thought. Um, Captain Case, I'm sure, talked about when he was out there, he talked about getting people out the easiest way. Okay, Sometimes we may not want to take them out the easiest way, um, especially if you've got some kind of hint that they're definitely going to have some neck or back pain. Instead of manipulating them to get them over that console in the middle, okay, maybe we need to extricate them from the vehicle instead of taking them out the easy way, like out the passenger door. You know, just so we can take care of that back and neck so that we don't hurt them. Um, last thing that, that we want to talk about is the traumatic arrest. Um, a lot of our officers don't know about what has to be done on a traumatic arrest. And I'm just going to touch on some of the points. Um, you can look it up. We do have the protocols on the S drive. Okay, but some of the things that we have to do, there's only three, really three people that we do not work on at all in a traumatic arrest situation in a car accident, okay? That's the people that are burned beyond recognition, the, the uh, people that are split completely in half one way or the other, okay? And then the third one's decapitation. Now they do have listed, you know, uh, lividity, rigor mortis, and decomposition, but on a car accident, we really shouldn't have that unless like they were stuck in a ravine for a long time or something like that. And just remember, especially in this kind of cold weather, that they're not dead until they're warm and dead. So think about that. Um, the part about the traumatic arrest, so everybody else, we have to get out of the vehicle. So when we get them out of the vehicle, um, we have to do two minutes, at least two minutes of CPR on them. Okay, we have to have a good airway on them, so we have to be able to bag them correctly. Okay, if they have some kind of chest injury, we have to needle the chest. And then if they have a hemorrhage, we have to stop the hemorrhage and we have to give them fluids. And we have to do all this before we put a monitor on them. And if they have a heart rate less than 40, then we can call medical control and they can give us the, the termination, if we can terminate that patient on the scene or not, okay? If not, if they're above that, we need to actually work them and take them to the hospital, okay? Um, one of the other things they wanted us to talk about was if we have a pregnant woman that's 24 weeks or above gestation, okay, that we need to actually, in, when we get them out of the vehicle, we need to take them immediately. I mean, we need to get them in the back of the vehicle get them to the hospital as soon as possible. And then, you know, because the only way that's gonna, we're gonna save that baby is that they get them cut out of the, out of the mom. Okay, so they want us to do all our work inside the ambulance. They don't want us to do anything on the scene. They just want us to get her going. Okay. So, so that has come up. So if we have an extended- With an arrest. Correct, arrest. correct. So if we have a, a, a traumatic arrest um, and it's going to be a long extrication, take that responsibility off of you. Um, call medical control, okay? And the big thing about that is, is they want you to paint a picture, okay? So if you sit there and tell them, you know, this is going to be a long extrication, you know, it's going to take us a while and they're in traumatic arrest, you know, they may sit there and, and, and be kind of iffy about calling it. Yeah, so, I mean, it's yeah, like yeah, there, there's some where, you know, if you sit there and, the whole bit, so yeah, if you, 
Yeah, and you've got you've got to tell them that you've yeah. you've got to give them a picture of what's going on. So because it's, I know it's different than normally for the past two years that we've been operating, let's say ten percent. Right. Means there was, you know, no fault of that, no, no trauma, you know, from our, our tenant or whatever. It's just all different now. Where you know, looking at the HARP rating and looking at the things that we've developed over the years, and it's a, it's never really addressed when you do it in, like you said, like the. Yeah, if you can't even get to them to put a monitor on them, Correct. you know, but you, you can at least, you know, check a pulse and sit there and go, they don't have a pulse and it's going to take us an hour to get them out. You know, if you tell them there's a car sitting on top of them that I can't even get to, you know, put a but monitor on them. I mean, and it's realistic in a, in a heavy attack situation, so we, we may have a 20 minute expectation. It doesn't seem like a long time, but 20 minutes within that, that pit group or within that team is, right. is a significant amount of time to where And that's all I got unless you guys got some more questions.